Hello and welcome to the second part in um, my Blender game engine tutorial. Um, this one is going to be on how to um, make sort of a door that will open when you press a button and stuff. Um, so first of all we need to create sort of some walls and stuff and the door so that um, we have a reason to have a door. Um, so we're going to press space, add, mesh, and I'm going to um, just add a cube. And then I'm going to grab that cube and move it over here. And um, then while I'm in edit mode, I just want to sort of grab these edges here and move them up so it's nice and thin. Um, make sure it's sort of got a good height to it. say higher than our player it's pretty good and um, then we'll just make it a, a fairly decent size room uh, so grab this go this way uh, then what you want to do is you want to press E to extrude it and you want to extrude it till it makes sort of like a square shape and then you just grab this two bits here E and extrude it and bring it all the way down to say here and then you extrude it to make a little square shape just so that the walls are all sort of even sized. Um, across there. Okay, and for this last bit, um, the door is going to be between about this area here, sort of. Um, so. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually um, build the door in like so, and then just separate it out. It's the easiest way I can think of doing it at the moment. Um, it's also a good idea if you don't do that on the corners, but I'm just trying to hurry, so it doesn't really worry me. Um, okay, so now what we need to do is we need to slick these this bit here, which will be our door, and I'm going to press P and separate it so it's a different object uh, then of course we'll have a hole here in our wall so I'm just going to fix that up by selecting this side, this side and pressing F to create a face and do the same on this side face. cool so now if we select our door part um, that will also need to have a face made on each of those sides and um, we're going to make it red um, just so that we can show the link between that and the button which we're going to create in a second uh, So go in here and add a new material and you just want to change it to red uh, Later on we'll be going over texturing and stuff, but for now this is just to show you um, How to make a working button and we're also going to change the color of the walls. We're going to make them Add a new material just so that they're a different color to our player. We're going to make them Sort of a maybe a light yellowy color there we go, now that we can tell them apart from everything else. Uh, now we need to add our button. It's going to be sort of just like a pad thing that you stand on. Um, add mesh cube. And go to side view. Press Z so we can see through everything, including the floor. Uh, move it down. Grab the bottom vertices. And if we scale them out. And then move these top ones down. To create sort of like a ramp on the side so that the uh, cube can actually get up on top of it. About there looks good. Um, so now that we have our pad, we will just give it our red colored material by going in here and linking the two um, color wise. Um, so now for the coding part. Um, so to do this, we first need to select our player and we want to go in here to logic and add a new property. It doesn't really matter what type of property it is, we just need to uh, name it P-L-A-Y-E-R. Um, and that's all we have to do for our player. Now for our um, button here, we need to add a sensor, a controller, and an actuator. And then we'll just connect them up. Um, now for the sensor, you want to change it to a collision sensor, and you want to put the property name P-L-A-Y-E-R, player. Um, 
so that'll sense any object with that ma with a property named player to collide with. Um, so if it is colliding with one of those, then it'll send a message out to um, the actuator, which is going to be a message actuator. Now you can send it to a specific object, but we're just going to make it a general sort of message. Um, and the message will be, uh, say, but one a so short for like button one activated kind of thing so um and then we're going to copy that so that we don't have to remember it and go over here to our door and what you want to do is you want to um add a property to that called up just and make it so that it's a int and change it to one um, basically what that's going to do is it's going to have that property so that um, the door knows when it's in the up position and then it'll know when it's in the down position because we only want it to open once. Um, so then we're going to add a sensor, a controller and an actuator. And um, before we go any further on, oh sorry, no, we'll just put the message thing in here and we want to type that subject in which is our button 1A. And um, now before we go any further, we need to animate the door for its sort of opening sequence. So you can make it do some kind of stupid movement if you want, but I'm just going to have mine sort of go down. You can also make it scale and stuff like that if you want, but um, that's up to you. Uh, so make sure you're on the first frame, as it says down here. Then we want to go I location. Um, then we want to go up, say, 30 frames. It's about a second to go down. And then grab Z and just move it under the floor. Um, cheap but it works and then um, press I location again so now in 31 frames it moves from being um, above ground to being underground so um, that's pretty cool and so now what we need to do is go down here and change it from motion to IPO and you want to make it so it says play and you want to be the start to be 1 and the end to be 31 because that's how long our animation is uh, so now that should all work, but um, what'll happen is if we press play now and we run over our um, button, it'll open, but when we touch it again, it, it opens again because it plays that animation again, and we don't want that to happen because it looks kind of glitchy. Uh, so to fix that, we use this property that we used, a uh, property that we just made, and we have a sensor called property connect that to our and you want to change the property to up and the value to one and it's at equal so if this property equals one and um, we get that message but one a then it'll send a thing down here to uh, play it and it'll also set our property by going up here to property and you want to change the property name to up and set it to a value of zero. So that'll mean that it'll play it through once and then it'll set the property to zero so that it can no longer do this loop again. So it'll only open the door once. Um, you can also later on have something that'll say close it and um, and then you'll have to have a different animation for that and it'll close it and then set the value back up to one so you can open it again. Um, but yeah, so now if I push play and we run over our button, it'll open the door. And now no matter how many times I run over that button and touch it or whatever, it um it'll not open that door again or close it or anything. So um that's about it for this tutorial. Um I hope it was handy and um look out for the next one.